Hey everybody and welcome back to my beauties. Today we're going to be talking about all things hair like we do over here on this channel quite a bit. We are going to talk about this discussion that's been going on over on the Twitter sphere between the modern hairstylists and their clients. And as a licensed cosmetologist, Y'all know I like to say that. I'm going to weigh in on my thoughts on this entire conversation. But before I do, make sure that you like this video and that you are subscribed to my channel so you don't miss out on any more of my beauty content. Okay? Let's get into it. Okay, so we have to talk about why this conversation is even needed. If I'm not mistaken, the conversation started off with a young lady doing a podcast because y'all already know everybody is doing a podcast. The young lady basically said that stylists are charging the price that they are the prices that they're charging because they're trying to keep up with this influencer lifestyle. Now, I saw the clip and I was like, hmm. That's a thought. <laughs> uh, so I decided, you know what, I wanted to make this video. I kind of put it on the back burner. Since then, Twitter has been ablaze. The TikTok has been ablaze. Even some of my favorite YouTubers have been making content addressing it. And I feel like who better to talk about this subject than, I don't know, someone whose profession it is. <laughs> So with that being said, I'm going to address some of the issues that I'm seeing from the client's perspective and from the stylist's perspective because I don't think that we're getting a balance. A lot of times when we see these rants and we see all these tweets and TikToks about people complaining, they don't understand it from the stylist's perspective as well. So I'm going to give y'all a balanced, a balanced view. It's going to come full circle and I'll give you all of my thoughts on these debates. So let's talk about the first issue. So stylists are trying to maintain a social media lifestyle. Let's talk about it. If we're going to be honest, everybody's trying to maintain a social media lifestyle. Social media is nothing but the highlight reel of your life, okay? But when you're following these celebrity stylists like Arrogant Tay or Tokyo Styles or Alonzo Arnold, they're on a whole different tax bracket. They are in a whole different league than your everyday stylist. And sometimes because Instagram is such a powerful tool, we get confused, you know what I'm saying, by what's reality and what's social media reality. So this thought that's to say that modern stylists are trying to maintain this social media lifestyle, I think it's, it's kind of laughable to be honest with you, but I can understand why people may say that. There are some stylists and there, you know, first of all, let me say this, never say never and never say always. I think that's not, that's a nuance that we're starting to get away from in social media. It's like, oh, if I say I don't like oranges, that's not to say that I dislike apples. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm talking about oranges. So with that being said, yes, there are some stylists that are trying to maintain a social media lifestyle, but don't, what, what is wrong with stylists trying, stylists in general, um, trying to afford a lifestyle that most of us out here want. If I've been working in the industry for 10, 15 years, why is it far-fetched for me to want a, a nice car? Side note, I'm not a car person, so I don't even know like, what car is what. Uh, let's, let's go with Rolls Royce because I guess maybe that's what people are driving. I don't know, I'm not a car person. We all know that inflation is on the rise, so why wouldn't stylists increase their prices to be able to afford just living day to day? I even saw one other a content creator make a point about people raising their prices, and she was outraged about it. You want to raise at your job, don't you? That's all I'm going to say. This is people's jobs. But if I've been working in the industry for 15 years, I why why is it far fetched for me to drive a Rolls Royce because I do your hair and you don't? Maybe I have the business acumen, the savings, the investments to be able to afford that. How is it that I'm trying to keep up with the social media lifestyle? I don't think that that is fair. But I do understand what clients are saying when they say I came to get you know 
six stitch braids and you're charging me $300. This one is the one that really tripped me the fuck out. Six to eight stitch braids, $220. I just did the math. That's almost 40, that is almost $40 per braid. Bro, I got hairstylists in my family that's been doing hair since I was alive. There's no way. Y'all are only charging these prices because y'all can and because somebody's dumb enough to pay it, but this is ridiculous. Like Now, when it comes to that, let's be real, stylists. That is ridiculous. There is no reason for six braids. And, and hey, can't knock the hustle, but that does make it hard out here for some of us who are being reasonable with our prices and reasonable is subjective i think pricing is subjective what makes a coach purse uh you know three hundred dollars and a louis vuitton purse a thousand dollars like what makes it different is the quality that different um are the materials that different probably not queen chama made an interesting um an interesting point in her video i'll link it down below and she said that in this new era hairstylists have become social media influencers and I thought that that was very interesting because it is kind of true what the new generation especially the TikTok generation was this generation Z they look for their service professionals on Instagram on TikTok they look at the pictures which means that you have to not only be you know the hairstylist professional you also have to be a content creator so you are a influencer in a right and People think that this influencer lifestyle, honey, is fun, games, and a lot of money. So, are they just charging their worth or are they trying to get over? I think it depends. I really do think it depends on, on the style, on the stylist, and on their level of expertise. So, with that being said, do I think it is absolutely ridiculous to charge $300 for some stitch braids? I absolutely do. Do I think that it's ridiculous to charge $1,000? for knee length or ankle length knockless braids I ain't gonna I ain't gonna hold you I ain't gonna hold you if you if you got it if you doing small knee length small ankle length knockless braids and you want to charge a thousand dollars for that I ain't mad at you because to be honest that's a lot of work it's a lot of work People diminish the cosmetology and beauty beauty feel, and I'm gonna say the beauty feel in general because it's it's people diminish nail techs, people diminish estheticians, hairstylists, everything. Um, I think people diminish that craft and that skill and don't realize how much work and physical toll it is on someone's body. And shoot, let's just say what it is, mental toll too, because dealing with people is hard. So if this is a 12 hour service and you want to get paid a thousand dollars for it, baby, hey, I don't see anything wrong with it. I really don't. It's a lot of work, y'all. I'm sorry. It is a lot of work. But I do believe that some people are taking advantage. That is for sure. Um, I'm not naive to say that. But I think that am I in a bubble or is this problem more common than I believe it is? Because I've worked in many salons, you guys. I have been licensed for going on 10 years now. I've done hair in about five different states. I've been licensed in three of the five states. <laughs> um, still hold license, you know what I'm saying? I've taught classes and everything. And what I see as a professional educator on the other side is that people are actually undercharging in the salons. Back to point one. I say all of that to go back to point one about a social media lifestyle. I think sometimes it may appear that way um, because people are flossing and there's a lot of flex culture and fl flossing and, you know, getting to the bag and wanting to look like a baddie and all this stuff on social media. But in actuality, most of the time, hairstylists aren't making as much money as people may think they're making. Even if I am charging you, you know, two hundred dollars now there again are some outliers and they are actually ridiculous but i can't if the work is up to par baby if the work is up to par why not pay it what makes the work up to par real quick we gotta pause the video and give a shout out to our sponsor the bestoke styling signature unit <laughs> Beast Stoke Styling Signature Unit is available to be customized and colored.
to your needs. Each unit is measured to exclusively fit you, no matter how big or small. Order your unit today to receive your luxury wig and wig storage. Visit the website www.bestokestyling.com And if you support small black businesses, make sure that you are on my email list. The link is down below in the D-box. Somebody is literally about to pay you a hundred something dollars to do their hair. Why are you telling them that they should have their hair washed or braided before they come? That's what you're there for. That's what they're calling you for. If you're not washing hair, and first off, let me, let me, let me come back. If you're not shampooing hair, cleansing the scalp, and blow drying the client's hair, there is absolutely no reason for you to be charging these astronomical prices. No reason at all, period. Now, this is where my issue is. Clients, I'm on your side on this. I'm on your side on this one, okay? There is absolutely no reason whatsoever for a stylist to be charging you hundreds of dollars and they can't even cleanse your scalp. Red flag, red flag on the play. No, that's ridiculous. And see, here's the thing. Most of the stylists that are doing that are unlicensed. So think about that for a second. I really want y'all to take a moment and think about that. You're paying all of this money for someone who has not even gone through the steps to get the education to do your hair effectively and properly. Because if you have been, if you're licensed, then you know better. I'm gonna talk to you like your grandmama used to. Baby, you know better. Proper consultations and shampoos are step one of any service. Just off top. I'm not gonna sit you down in my chair and do your hair and I don't even know if your hair is actually clean. I don't know what issues your scalp may actually have. In order to perform a professional ser service, you need to be shampooing your client's hair. Now, I will say braiders are a little bit different. I have a cosmetology license. I don't have a braiding license. So I don't necessarily know what their requirements are, but I have worked with people who had braiding license in the past and they've shampooed my hair. So I'm just saying. And even if, even if you go to someone who's doing hair out of their house, they should still have a shampoo set up. Ask me how I know, baby, because they sell them on Amazon. There's no reason for you to not shampoo a client's hair, especially if you're charging premium prices. Premium prices deserve a premium service. I think that that is just common sense. So if you're going to someone and they say that you already have to come with your hair shampooed, blow dried, parted, braided down, maybe you need to find a professional. And stylist, if you are licensed and you're doing that, I suggest you stop right now because these clients can report you to state board and guess what? You won't have a license. Across all the states that I've worked, that is not acceptable. You are supposed to shampoo your client's hair, period. What is that? An extra 30 minutes to the service to shampoo and blow dry? You ain't even got to do a bone straight blow dry. Get the comb attachment. That's an extra 30 minutes to the service. There is no reason for you not to do that. And I guarantee you that that will, first of all, I'm going to tell y'all this too. Secret to the new stylists out there. This The secret to keeping a client in your chair is a good shampoo. Pro tip, you could be a mediocre stylist. But baby, you know how to get into that scalp and rub and cleanse that scalp real good. You know how to get that good elbow. Baby, that'll keep them coming back every two weeks. Cleanse your client's hair, please. Step one, I got another pro tip for y'all stylists out there. Add it into your price. If you charge $100 for box braids, start charging $120 and shampoo your client's hair. I guarantee you they are not gonna care anything about the extra 20, especially when they realize that they don't actually have to come with half the work done. I can't talk for nobody else around here, but shampooing and blow drying my own hair is the worst part. It's the worst part. Why am I coming to you if I gotta do it myself? Seriously, seriously. So that should not be an additional fee. Just go ahead and wrap that into your normal 
your normal service fees so that the clients don't even feel that. But let's talk about these additional fees while we're here. Y'all don't understand what additional fees are for. Now, let's talk about some that I've seen and I'll tell you if I agree or disagree. Additional fees for shampoos and blow dries. No, that should be included in your base price. Additional fees for parting when you're getting braids. Absolutely not. You're getting braids. What are you not going to part? Are we doing free form locks here? Like, what? If you don't want to do hair, just say that. Additional fees for length and density. Oh, this one's going to be controversial. Buckle up. Okay, buckle up. And listen, listen, I know how you girls like to tussle, but I'm going to just tell y'all the God honest truth. There should be fees for, a, for excessive length and density. Whoa. Whoa, I know. I know y'all are booing me. I know y'all are booing me. I hear it. I a lot of the criticism surrounded around charging for extra density or extra length is that people think that they're taking advantage of 4C hair and natural hair. And that is actually oftentimes a myth. Now again, never say never, never say always. But that's oftentimes a myth, especially when you're dealing in a professional setting. Because even in white salons, I've worked in both. Even in white salons, if your hair is thicker than, so the average uh, ponytail is maybe about that thickness. Can y'all see that? Maybe about that thickness. So if this is the average thickness of a ponytail and I am doing your hair, I'm doing a color service, which means you're gonna use more product and your ponytail is now this thick, then I'm gonna charge more money for that. Also, if we're talking about the length, if I am doing a silk press to someone whose hair stops right here versus someone who hair, whose hair stops right here. That's more product. That's more time. That means I need to be compensated for it. The person whose hair is right here would be offended if I charge the same amount as the person whose hair right here. Don't you think? It goes, it goes both ways, you guys. So there's actually absolutely nothing wrong for someone charging extra if you have extra hair. There's nothing wrong with that. Let's say a silk press is $60 and it takes me an hour to do it. But because your hair is extra long and extra thick, it takes me two hours to do it. What's wrong with me charging $90 now? That's half of the appointment that I could have had someone else in that chair. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, you guys. You have to be understanding of product usage, time, wear and tear, all of those things. But I do not agree with charging additional fees because of your hair type. So I'm not going to charge you more just because you have 4C hair. That is ridiculous. That's discriminatory. That's going to keep people from coming to your chair. So I say this to you, stylists. Make sure that you're being accountable and you're being fair. Don't just charge people extra just because it's a Tuesday and I want to charge you extra. Then people feel like they're being taken advantage of. And you don't keep clients when people feel like they're being taken advantage of. The next issue that I've been seeing is people saying that these new stylists have too many rules. So, ooh. We gonna have another unpopular opinion. <laughs> Nowadays, you have to book a deposit, you have a late fee, you have to come uh, wash and blow dry, you need to park in the back, don't bring your kids, you know, all of these, all of these extra things. And I'm gonna tell you like this, as, a, as from both sides, I get it. Now, I've already talked to y'all about the wash and the blow dry, but let's talk about these deposits for a second. I'm pretty sure I spoke on deposits once before in my Things Stylists Wish Clients new video. I'm going to link that up here, but I'm going to give it to you one more time on a quick tip right here. Deposits are asked for because stylists are tired of being scammed. And clients, I get it. Sometimes y'all get scammed under y'all deposits too. Scamming is real out here. Everybody's trying to get to their bag. 
but I get having a deposit because I need to hold your space. There have been too many times where I've been in a salon with a full book and then people no call, no show, or cancel at the last minute and I could have gotten someone else in that seat. So now I'm just completely out of my money for that day and I'm sitting here looking like boo-boo the boo. Don't argue with me, argue with your mama about it. I wholeheartedly agree with deposits. If you book it with me, you got to pay that deposit. That way I know that you're serious. Now, when it comes to whether they're refundable or not refundable, we can talk about that a little bit. Stylists, if you out here canceling people's appointment, you can just give them their money back. That's stealing. That's stealing. Now, if they cancel, that's different. Keep it. But if you cancel, you need to give them their money back. If not, that is, that is robbery. If and clients... If that is not a part of their policy, I suggest you find someone who, who's that is a part of their policy because that sounds scammy. Red flag on the play. I give y'all the red flags too. I'm on y'all side. I'm on y'all side too. Let's get into these late fees. Sometimes y'all y'all be running out. You wouldn't you wouldn't think you were still being seen by Dr. Smith if you came 30 minutes late. So why should Tanya's books be messed up for the rest of the day because you decide to come 30 minutes late? Now, whenever you talk about late fees, clients always want to pull up. But what about if my stylist is late and got me there all day? I'm with you. Because I don't want you in the salon all day. I don't want to look at you all day just like you don't want to look at me all day. I completely agree. Stylish, y'all got to be on time. Okay? You got to learn how to do proper time management. Don't be double booking people. Don't, like, all of that kind of stuff is amateur hour and it's greedy and again you won't you don't you don't get far when you try to be greedy okay so y'all need to be on time pro tip if you are running 15 to 30 minutes late and your next client has come in give that client a complimentary deep conditioning service wow yes you're losing out on a little bit of product However, the client still feels like they have been started on time and they are getting something for the, for the time that they're there versus just sitting in the front watching you do the next person. Now, if you are on someone and it's going to take you longer than 30 minutes to finish up, if once you see that, you need to call your client and let them know ahead of time so that they're not up in the salon waiting on you. Period. If it is to that point and you charge a late fee, you need to just go ahead and chalk that $15 or $10 or whatever your late fee is. Give them that discount. That's good merit. That's called customer service. Sometimes we got to get back to the core customer service. But I'm here for the late fees, especially if you got a bunch of people that always want to be late. But stylists, again, it's about what? What's our word for the day? Accountability. And clients, the thing is, a lot of times these stylists have all these rules because they've been burned. You can only get burned so many times before you're like, you know what? This has to be policy. This has to be policy. If you don't agree with someone's policy, guess what? You have the option to not go to them. Kind of simple. So I have addressed pretty much everything I've seen on the internet. I hope that I was able to give clients some better perspective from a stylist perspective from a stylist point of view and stylists I hope I was able to be helpful to y'all and give y'all some tips and tricks to just do better business all black businesses aren't janky you guys and this narrative that is starting to be over on the Twitter sphere and the TikTok is making it seem like all black businesses are janky and the thing about it is I've worked with more professional and and great stylists in my years than I have unprofessional and not great stylists so maybe I'm in a bubble or maybe y'all are in a bubble. Who knows? But we just need to come together, you guys. We need y'all just as much as y'all need us. It's a symbiotic relationship. Talk about it down in the comments. Let me know. Have you had a terrible salon experience? Are you a stylist and your clients have been acting a plum food and vice versa? And also, if you want to talk about some other terrible salon experiences, check out my playlist. It's called Tales from the Salon Hairstylist horror stories. I got a whole playlist. I'm going to leave that linked up here below. If you made it this far, you must really enjoy my commentary. So make sure that you are subscribed to my channel with that notification bell on so you don't miss out on any more of my videos. And I will definitely be back soon for another one. All right. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace. Thank you for joining me for another video. If you would like access to the full video, 
Become a beauty by joining the membership. Take a look around my website to see all the services that I offer. Then click the Join Today button to receive access to live streams, member-only content, beauty community posts, and producer credit. Thank you to all the beauties that have supported me thus far and all the beauties that are joining each day.